tonight at 7 on 7. This is 7 News with Angela Cox. We begin with a significant escalation in Australia's fight against coronavirus. This afternoon, the Prime Minister announced tough new restrictions to try to slow the spread of COVID-19. Let's take a look at the main points. From midnight, all people arriving in the country will be forced into 14 days of self-isolation. Cruise ships will be banned from docking in Australia for at least the next 30 days. Strict social distancing measures have been put in place, meaning static gatherings of 500 or more people are now also banned. New rules limiting the exposure of nursing home residents to the general public are being finalised. However, schools and universities will remain open for now. We're going to have to get used to some more changes in the way we live our lives over the next six months or so. There will be further uh, intrusions, there will be further restrictions on people's movement and their behaviour. Our aim in all of this is to protect the most vulnerable. Let's go live now to political correspondent Tim Lester in Canberra. Tim, it was a pretty extraordinary announcement from the PM. What does it all mean? And our border measures for visitors and Australians alike are being ramped up to an extent that frankly was unthinkable just a few weeks ago. Anyone entering the country from midnight Australian Eastern Time will be directed to self-isolate for 14 days. Prime Minister Morrison says those who fail to do so will be committing an offence. He says he expects visitor numbers now to grind to a halt rapidly. Tourism's long nightmare deepens. As well, Cabinet's National Security Security Committee has banned cruise ships for a minimum 30 days. The new National Cabinet, combining federal and state leaders, has confirmed non-essential public gatherings of more than 500 people are not to go ahead. The Prime Minister now says such gatherings could contravene state law. People coming to Australia will be required, will be required, I stress, to self-isolate for 14 days. Tim, the PM stopped short of closing schools. Uh, yes, Ange, for now, though the Chief Medical Officer warns that measures like this and measures around what he calls social distancing are under review daily. Because young people appear to cope with coronavirus far better than older adults, there's a belief schools might actually foster what's called a herd immunity to the virus with relatively little risk. As well, children out of school will be more exposed to older family members who don't cope with the virus as well, and medical staff may have to stay away from their jobs to mind their children. At great risk, the availability of critical workers such as nurses and doctors and others who are essential in the community because they would have to remain home and look after their children. Tim, one point the PM was eager to make, the importance of social distancing. What does this mean? Well, Ange, it could mean not turning up to a football match with 50,000 people you don't know to sit for a couple of hours. That, as we've discussed, will now be against state or ter territory law. It can also be about teleconferencing rather than going to physical meetings. The new National Cabinet did that today. And it's now about shaking hands. The Prime Minister now says, from the government's perspective, shaking hands stops as of today. Bump elbows, nod, whatever. But the old greeting that we've known for all of our lives is on an undetermined pause for the time being. Ange? OK, Tim Lester for us in Canberra. Thank you. Let's bring in Samantha Brett now in Sydney. Sam, cruise ships are banned from docking for the next 30 days at least. What does this mean for travellers? Yeah, good afternoon, Angel. The Prime Minister has just announced that uh, foreign cruise ships won't be able to dock in Australia for the next 30 days, and then that will be assessed on a rolling basis. So the situation will be assessed after one month to see if that ban does continue. Now, for the Australians who are already on a foreign cruise, well, the government says that they will work together with Border Force and they will try and get those Australians home as soon as possible. Of course, when they do arrive home, they will also have to self-isolate for 14 days. Now, cruise ship passengers from overseas, they spent about $1 uh, billion at local ports. So this, of course, is a huge blow for our tourism industry. But as the Prime Minister mentioned today, he's now putting the health of Australians as a priority.
OK, thanks so much, Sam. Australia's new border restrictions echo those imposed by New Zealand yesterday, which have been causing headaches for travellers at Sydney Airport. The fallout from coronavirus just keeps growing by the day. Today, sporting bosses made the startling admission that the future of some of our most beloved games are in serious doubt. Chris Reason has more. Well, Ange, good afternoon to you. The coronavirus again causing more angst and chaos for international travellers. The New Zealand government announcement of a mandatory two-week ban on all return travellers causing a rush at airports across the country today of Kiwis trying to get home. But the New Zealand Warriors, the NRL rugby league team, deciding that they would instead stay in Australia for the sake of the code. Now, the league bosses Todd Greenberg and Peter Vlandes today held an extraordinary press conference declaring the league will go on uh, at least through round two, but admitting it is a decision that they will make day by day and one that could change tomorrow. They have hired a biosecurity and public health expert now to help navigate the uncertain days ahead, but they say they are resisting following the lead of other sports internationally and they will play on, admitting the financial viability of the code could collapse. It could have catastrophic effects on us moving forward. Our money will only last so long and once it's extinguished, we are in big trouble. They are now preparing to ask the federal government for a slice of the $17 billion stimulus package, uh, arguing that they are a critical part of not only the economy but also the mental health of Australia. As long as we can keep our players on the field and rugby league being played on a weekend, that's going to contribute enormously to the social fabric of the country. Now Wayne Bennett has weighed into the debate today. He's suggesting a possible shift of all clubs to North Queensland to live and play in quarantine conditions and make sure that the game survives. We do need a plan B and we probably need to enact it sooner than later. Now league bosses say all 16 clubs are cooperating at this stage. Crisis talks with the New Zealand Warriors overnight convinced them to stay here in Australia, have based themselves in Kingscliff on the northern New South Wales coast and thereby avoid the compulsory two-week quarantine for all incoming travellers. That quarantine, of course, effective tonight. That saw a rush of New Zealanders heading to airports today trying to beat the curfew. It's supposed to be back on Tuesday, but um, just booked a new, had to book a new flight. Well, I came out for the cricket, so it's been a bit of a disaster. <laughs> and speaking of rush, uh, more scenes of shopper panic today. Extraordinary queues outside Costco in Adelaide, as you can see from these pictures. And also in Melbourne, near riot scenes again at one local Aldi store. More cancellations announced today to uh, Sydney's Vivid Festival. It's the biggest light and music festival in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, now gone. It'll be a massive hit for the state's economy. $172 million generated and some 2.4 million visitors attracted. Now that event is over. Ange. Let's get more on the impact on sport. Right now in the NRL, the Manly Sea Eagles are playing Melbourne Storm in front of a packed crowd. Seven sports editor Jim Wilson is there. Jim, this will be one of the last NRL games being played in front of spectators. Yes, Hans, good afternoon to you. It's the second last game, in fact, with a live crowd inside a venue. Uh, another game tonight in Wollongong uh, between the Dragons and the West Tigers. But right now, you just mentioned Manly and the Storm, uh, the halftime of their game here at Brookie. Uh, but from Thursday night, well, we're hoping that the NRL continues, but that's right on a knife's edge. I spoke to a, a, a range of officials a short time ago, and there's no cast-iron guarantees that the games will proceed on Thursday night at the NRL. And the same with the AFL. Now, the AFL, they're preparing for, well, what should have been a crowd of around about 90,000 at the MCG for Carlton Richmond on Thursday evening. Again, that game, if it does proceed on Thursday night, and at this stage it is, will be played in an empty stadium. So from 90,000 to no fans at the MCG. So, Ange, both B40 codes impacted. At this stage, the NRL and the AFL will proceed. They will be empty stadiums. And as we mentioned, or as Chris mentioned just before in his story, uh, the Warriors are now based in northern New South Wales and they will be playing on the Gold Coast next Saturday afternoon against the Canberra Raiders. Ange? Just huge impacts, Jim. What other sports have been impacted overseas in the past 24 hours? 
Well, a range of sports here and overseas. Let's talk about racing first up. Now, the Golden Slipper, one of the most prestigious races on the calendar. Well, it will go ahead next Saturday at Rose Hill in Western Sydney, but there'll be no race goers there. It will be an empty course, and the same it looks like for the championships next month at Royal Randwick. The races will proceed, but there'll be no race goers there. Then we talk about Super Rugby, the last match of Super Rugby we played this afternoon. Then that competition will be suspended due to the fact that it's so many teams are travelling in and out of countries, including Australia and New Zealand. The Masters Golf, time honoured, usually takes place at Augusta in April. That's been postponed, and that's in addition to the EPL, the English Premier League soccer being suspended, the NBA being suspended, and also the Major League Baseball on the brink of also being impacted, And So certainly here and abroad, sporting events are certainly being impacted by the corona, coronavirus crisis. Back to you, of course, more developments as they happen and more at 7 News at 6 o'clock. OK, thank you so much, Jim Wilson. President Donald Trump has tested negative for coronavirus. After concerns were raised, he may have been infected. Paul Kadak has more from New York. Paul, all this on the same day the US widened its travel ban. Good evening, yeah, and it comes after growing questions about Donald Trump's exposure to people who have then gone on to test positive for the disease and his still very publicly shaking hands, even though his own health officials are saying we should be touching elbows instead, is what the president had to say. I also took the test last night, yeah, and I decided I should, based on the press conference yesterday, people were asking did I take the test. I don't know whatever it takes, a day or two days, whatever, whatever it is, they send it to a lab. That test came back negative for coronavirus. Now, what was interesting, everyone at that White House briefing today had to get their temperature checked first. A reporter who registered a temperature of 38 degrees was actually refused entry to it. Now, a key announcement at that briefing was that the United States is expanding its Europe travel ban to include the UK and Ireland. It means that from midnight on Monday, no foreign national from Britain or Ireland will be allowed to travel to the US. Meantime, in Aspen, Colorado, 13 Australians remain in lockdown, 10 of them testing positive to coronavirus, three refusing to be tested. Let's stay inside, let's be sensible. We don't really know about this virus, we don't know how bad it is, um, so they're just being sensible. The disruptions continue, Apple announcing it is closing its stores around the world except for in China. Here in New York City, which is just recorded its first death from coronavirus. Prison visits have been stopped and the Catholic Archdiocese has announced that its church services are cancelled until further notice. And authorities have had to issue a fresh warning about virus testing scams after authorities in Los Angeles intercepted what they suspect to have been fake virus testing kits. As authorities here have told Americans the virus has not hit its peak here and to expect more cases and more deaths. From New York, it's back to you. Still to come in 7 News, more on the new coronavirus restrictions, what they mean for you. And Europe goes into lockdown, tourists trapped, fighting to get home, see how it's being handled next. He's made headlines, but he's spoken to no one. He shocked Australia countless times, but maintained his silence. The most shocking is still to come when Ben Cousins breaks his silence. Only on 7. When I'm travelling, I love having plenty of room. Did you know Accor has great apartment brands like Mantra, Peppers and Art Series? Get the luxury of space in amazing locations all over Australia and New Zealand. Live limitless to the core. Kick off the new season at Harvey Norman. Get a great deal on selected home entertainment products and receive up to $150 in Rebel e-gift cards. Like this LG 65-inch 4K TV, only $995. Plus get a bonus $50 Rebel e-gift card. Pump up the sound with the Sonos Beam, now $595. Plus a $30 Rebel e-gift card. New season, new tech, new gear with bonus Rebel e-gift cards. In store and online, now at Harvey Norman. Domino's is taking deep pan to a whole new level. Crispier on the outside, fluffier on the inside, and deeper than ever. Share a Domino's deep pan today from just 15 bucks delivered. How good do they look? I thought you loved you. Yeah. It's not a ram. 
Yeah, it looks great. Sounds even better. Nice truck, mate. The new Ram 1500 Express Crew Cab is big on space, has a powerful V8 Hemi and up to four and a half ton towing. The Ram 1500 is unrivaled in every way. That's why our range of pickup trucks eats you for breakfast. The Prime Minister has enacted the strictest public health crackdown in generations as the government works to stop the spread of coronavirus. From midnight, all people arriving in the country will be forced into 14 days of self-isolation. Cruise ships will also be banned from docking. Those restrictions will last for 30 days, maybe longer. Strict social distancing measures are now being encouraged. Static gatherings of 500 or more people are banned, which will have a huge impact on sporting events. New rules limiting the exposure of nursing home residents to the general public are being considered. Schools and universities will remain open for now, but the PM hasn't ruled out even tougher restrictions. We have news just in now from the UK. The Queen has left Buckingham Palace as coronavirus cases in Britain skyrocket. It's understood Her Majesty will remain in self-isolation at Windsor Castle until it's safe to resume royal duties. Across Europe, the situation is deteriorating rapidly. Governments are now locking down their borders as they struggle to contain the disease. For the people of Europe, a climate of fear is now the new normal. Store shelves emptied ahead of a massive lockdown in France, a state of emergency shutting down all shops in Spain, while Israel will close cafes, clubs and theatres. Coronavirus cases are now sweeping Europe, closing borders in Poland and Denmark, while in Italy new cases jumped 20% to more than 21,000, solidifying Europe as the new epicentre of the pandemic. And at airports across the region, Chaos. Travellers racing to get back home after the US announced it was closing its borders to not just Europe, but the UK and Ireland as well. And it's not just tourists. Students on exchange are fighting to get home to their families or risk being trapped overseas as exchange programs are axed. The message from their universities, get out now. We got a email saying that our program was cancelled and that they strongly advised us to leave the country. Health officials are now questioning whether a ban on air travel will even do anything to slow the spread of the disease. To contain the virus, more countries are quarantining people coming off flights. The US hasn't taken that step yet, but health experts are warning it's looking increasingly likely. We're probably a week or two away uh, from this really becoming a major epidemic across the entire nation. And we've got to do everything we can to prevent as much of that as possible and prepare as much as possible. But with global markets already on the ropes, fears now that shutting down the world's financial epicentre will set into motion a cataclysmic chain of events for economies across the globe. Christian Galpset, 7 News. In other news, a pair of tourists has been freed after being taken hostage in West Africa. Canadian Edith Blaze and Luca Tacchetto from Italy were captured more than a year ago. They were rescued overnight by UN peacekeepers in Mali. It's not known yet who abducted them, but jihadist groups with links to Al-Qaeda and Islamic State are active in the region. To incredible pictures now, this is a mill in the US which burst into flames overnight. There was little firefighters could do to control the blaze due to its ferocity and the abundance of fuel. Emergency crews tried to put it out, but hours after it started, flames were still raging. Incredibly, no injuries have been reported. Time for Sport Now with Mel McLaughlin and the NRL and AFL seasons to continue. You're right, and just at this stage, that is the plan. Coming up in sport, the round one showdown in the AFL between Richmond and Carlton will proceed on Thursday night at an empty MCG. Also ahead, no crowds from Thursday night in the NRL as Souths hang on against Cronulla in their season opener. And the A-League also set to be impacted by the coronavirus as we count down to the finals. Loving that rosehip glow? Take that radiance to the next level and discover rosehip beauty glow from within with new Nature's Way Beauty Rosehip Tablets. For the first time, our special premium rosehip extract comes together with collagen and antioxidants to help enhance skin firmness and elasticity, skin regeneration and collagen formation. Radiate a healthy glow from within with Nature's Way Beauty Rosehip at leading supermarkets and pharmacies. In my own way. 
It's not a bad offer. Mm, I think I got a better one on the Corolla. Get the Corolla hatch range with 3.9% finance. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. OK, Belinda, it's time to tango. Because each morning I'm reclaiming my health with NIB Rewards, which gives me discounts on hundreds of everyday items and experiences. It's how I got you. And you know what? I'm just getting started. Reclaim your health with NIB today. It's worth it. Welcome back as the NRL prepares for empty stadiums from Thursday night. Round one is almost done. Wayne Bennett will continue easing Latrell Mitchell into his new role as Rabbitohs fullback. The Bunnies' prize recruit had a quiet debut in South Sydney's 22-18 win over the Sharks and was benched after 55 minutes. Souths were cruising with a 14-point lead before Sione Katoa crossed twice in just three minutes. Former Rabbitoh Connor Tracy blew a chance to win it for Cronulla. The Roosters' premiership defence started with a 20-14 defeat to Penrith at Panther Stadium. The Super Rugby season will stop after this afternoon's clash between the Brumbies and Waratahs in Canberra. The coronavirus postponement is cruel timing for Australian rugby as things finally start looking good again. Last night, the Reds came from 17-0 down to run over the Bulls 41-17 at Suncorp Stadium. And there's plenty to like about the young Queensland team that's just fallen short of several big wins now. Showed an incredible fight for our, for our jersey and ourselves. We, we wanted a bit of reward after the tough slog we've had at the start and for our fans as well. Officials are discussing ways to keep rugby being played while the super competition is on hold. The A-League finals will almost certainly be impacted by the coronavirus crisis, but this weekend fans have been allowed inside venues. Sydney FC was held to a scoreless draw against Perth Glory. The latter leading, uh, leader appeared to have the upper hand in the grand final rematch, but an early goal was overturned by VAR. And then, with only four minutes to go, Milos Ninkovic missed a golden opportunity. I should score in the end, you know. I'm so disappointed. It was 1v1 against goalkeeper. Second place, Melbourne City also had a draw one all with the Western Sydney Wanderers. Well, Western Sydney's own Ellie Carpenter got the ball rolling in today's W League semi-final, but for Melbourne City against the Wanderers, Matilda's great Kai Simon scored twice in Sydney's 5-1 win. That puts them into the grand final against Sydney FC. Details for the decider are yet to be confirmed. Well, there was a star attraction at the Coonamble races today and champion jockey Hugh Bowman says racing at empty courses will be business as usual. This time last year, Bowman was preparing for a grand farewell and mighty mare winks in front of a huge crowd at Randwick. I had the opportunity to ride at a couple of meetings without a crowd. Um, the reality is once you're in the race, once the gate's open, it's literally no different. Well, there will be no race goers at the Golden Slipper next Saturday at Rose Hill and it is likely to be the same for the championships at Randwick. Fremantle defeated the Western Bulldogs by 15 points in a record-breaking AFLW game in Melbourne. The two teams kicked 18 goals between them to set the highest aggregate score for a women's match. A stunning four goals to one final term gave the Dockers their sixth straight win, 66 to 51, in front of a handful of fans. Fremantle Dockers, too powerful, too classy, too good. Uh, both sides really put on a, a good display in front of a. Uh, not very huge crowd. The GWS Giants moved up to second on the Conference A ladder with a five-point win over the Crows in Adelaide. And the men's season starts on Thursday night between Richmond and Carlton behind closed doors at the MCG. Our canoe sprinters are not giving up on going to the Olympics this year. The Paddle Australia Championships concluded at the Sydney Regatta Centre today. Alice Wood and Tom Green are a step closer to qualifying for Tokyo 2020 after winning their respective K1 500 races. Both had already locked in their provisional spots for July's Games. Final teams will be announced in the next two weeks. Not a huge amount of sport going on around town, so great to see that. And fingers crossed, everyone's still optimistic about the Olympics. Good stuff. Thanks yeah. so much, Mel. <laughs> Still to come in 7 News, we'll have all your Monday weather details right around the country. Three, two, one. Take off. Take charge. Take it all. And then some. Show off. Nice rocket. Show the way.
and then some. Be sure. Be adventurous. Just be that person, and then some. The X Range. Has your life been turned upside down by a work accident? Talk to Australia's number one law firm. Morris Blackburn Lawyers will maximise your claim so you can get on with your life again. Call us now. It costs nothing to know where you stand. At Pacific Harbour Bribey Island, the beach is part of your life. Secure your large home site from under $290,000. Just 50 minutes from Brisbane Airport by bridge. Visit bribeybeach.com.au. Anyhow, I didn't like him. He's no good for you. I know. Now, are you coming for dinner? Of course not. I'll see you soon. Love you. Belonging. It's funny how we all seem to need it so much. To belong to someone, to the system. An ideal, a hierarchy, a version of reality. You're not a jigsaw piece. Fit with what fits you. The two grand coupe. Because. Nivea Q10 Power, Australia's number one anti-age day cream, contains natural Q10, identical to the one made by your skin, to visibly reduce wrinkles. Nivea Q10 Power, 100% skin identical, 100% you. Time to take a look at the weather now. A cold front is bringing a cool southerly wind change as well as showers and storms to eastern New South Wales. Cool air in the wake of this front is also causing some showers over southern New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. While troughs are triggering showers and storms over Western Australia and the top end. Let's take a look around the capitals for tomorrow. Brisbane, 27 degrees and partly cloudy. Showers and 23 degrees in Sydney, 19 and partly cloudy for you in Canberra. Melbourne, sunny and 25 degrees. In Hobart, it'll be partly cloudy. Uh, sunny in Adelaide with a top of 29 degrees there. Perth, 26 degrees with a possible shower. And for Darwin, partly cloudy with a top of 34 degrees. We've seen coronavirus panic bring out the worst in some people, like fighting over toilet paper. But we wanted to share with you a sweet example of how the pandemic is bringing some communities together. This is Italy, ground zero for Europe's outbreak. The country has been under nationwide lockdown for almost a week. Still, the music plays on. Residents in Rome, unable to leave their home, staged a street concert, blasting music through the neighbourhood. It didn't take long before everyone joined in, singing and dancing together from their balconies, keeping morale high during this time of crisis. Isn't it fabulous? And that is Seven News for now. Our next bulletin is Seven News at Six. I'm Angela Cox. Thanks so much for your company.